也瓦西瓦拉金金拉多多加瓦根达扬达拉玛达达米切迪巴拉龙杰萨达拉米耶耶达拉多美多杰扎吉霍万牛多伊索萨吉吉拉多耶索拉玛扎吉巴多达尼
Jamrilabja so then uh, we have a section on the, in the text is page 205, the bottom of page 205. And here um, it says here, maintain your refuge and do not forsake the three jewels even at a cost, even if it ingests of it costs you your life. So this is the sixth of, sixth of the, uh, uh, the personal instructions. The benefits of refuge just appear in personal instructions. So here it says, mm, when one takes refuge in the three jewels, uh, one should uh, protect one's refuge. Uh, even at the cost of one's life, one should not abandon one's refuge to the three jewels. Mm, now that one has taken refuge in the three jewels, one should observe uh, the precepts of refuge. And, and since one has taken refuge in the three jewels from the very depths of one's being, uh, one should not abandon it even at the cost of one's life. For example, if someone were to uh, threaten you um, with death, you know, and if you know, you should saying that you know, you must give up your refuge in three jewels, otherwise I will kill you. Uh, so even under such occasions, under such circumstances, still one should not abandon one's refuge uh, towards the three jewels. Yes. <coughs> Before that, so if one has, uh, if one uh, devote from the from very bottom heart then the then uh, the practice that one don't give up life uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the one do not give up refuge um, uh, cherishing more the life than giving up refuge is that doesn't uh, so uh, see, not giving up refuge even cause life danger that doesn't so that uh, that will happen so if one say if one devote from uh, from uh, say uh, from bottom of the heart, then the practice not giving up refuge, even when it's cost a lot of danger, this will happen. Mm. So then the next advice is that one should not abandon the three jewels, and even if it's uh, a joke, you know, even in jest. One should not jokingly say, you know, I shall not practice Dharma anymore, I shall abandon the three jewels. These kinds of uh, jokes or jests you know, should even be abandoned as well. Yes. Mm. Uh so uh, if one is swear, uh, also one should avoid swearing uh, using the name of the three jewels. So this, uh, for example, if one uh, makes a certain declaration and one says the three jewels uh, is one's witness or the three jewels know that I'm saying the truth and so forth, uh, one should not uh, say such things. If this is said, then it goes against the precepts of refuge. And uh, especially if one is saying a lie and, uh, and then uses the name of the three jewels, this goes against uh, the uh, refuge precepts. In general, one should not swear 
uh, in general, and especially uh, if especially when one uses, if one were to use the name of the three jewels, then they will not will even be more improper. It goes against refuge precepts. So in the past, the um, king of Tibet, Lama Yishi, was, uh, who had invited uh, Lama Tisha, Lama Tisha to uh, Tibet, he was uh, kidnapped by the uh, king of Garlo, uh, which was a, a non-Buddhist king. And so uh, King Garlo had um, threatened him, saying that you should abandon the Dharma, uh, otherwise I will not, uh, if you abandon the Dharma, I will release you, if not, I will kill you. And, and hence the King Halama uh, refused to abandon Dharma and so sacrificed himself. So one should have faith in the three jewels uh, to this extent. Yes. Mm. Uh So here, uh, at the top, on the top page 206, it says here, inevitably you will lose your body, life, and resources. So here is uh, how does one train with such uh, firm conviction in the three jewels that uh, one will not abandon the three jewels even at the cost of one's life. One should repeatedly contemplate that uh, one's physical, even if one were to part with one's physical body, uh, one's life, as well as one's enjoyments, one's resources, uh, st still that kind of loss is uh, nothing because it is only, uh, oh, all, the, all these things eventually one will part with them because they are uh, not permanent in nature. Eventually one will come to lose them. So it says here inevitably this means that uh, this loss of separation is uh, something that is without doubt. You know, it definitely will occur. And even if so, if one, even if one were to be uh, separated from these, uh, this is only a loss pertaining to this life. You know, this is only a loss pertaining to this life. However, if one were to abandon the three jewels, that kind of loss is a loss that has occurred uh, accrued from over a span of many lifetimes. So if one will uh, lose the happiness of many lifetimes, experience uh, many sufferings. So uh, in this life one will experience many sufferings, in future lives one will not meet with the three jewels and so forth. And therefore one will experience uh, endless sufferings un uninterruptedly. Uh, so therefore one should repeatedly, through contemplating in this way, one should repeatedly vow over and over again to never forsake uh, one's refuge, to never abandon one's refuge, uh, where even just uh, mouthing the words in jest. Must. <coughs> <coughs> 
so then here Lama Tsongkhapa says, uh, further uh, teachers in the past have said that there is a precept that you should practice going for refuge to the Tathagata or the Buddha of whichever direction you are going in. So here Lama Tsongkhapa says, I have not seen a source for this. So, um, <coughs> taking refuge, uh, whichever direction you are going, taking refuge to that direction for this. So in whichever direction that one is traveling uh, towards to take refuge in the Buddha pertaining to the, uh, the Buddha residing in that direction. And then, uh, so there, in general, there is such a practice whereby, you know, wherever one... So, uh, by doing that, you, then you have success. Wherever one travels, then all of one's... If one travels in that particular direction and prays to the Buddha residing in that direction, then one... Uh, achieve success in all of one's wishes, all of one's tasks or purposes are accomplished. And however, to uh, there is such a practice. However, for the to say that this is an an actual refuge precept, Lama Tsongkhapa says he has not seen a source uh, for such a claim to validate such a claim as a refuge precept in itself. え、uh uh so then, uh, in general, Lama Tsongkhapa, in his writings, uh, if he, he if if there is a particular text or a uh, saying that is to be cited in Lama Tsongkhapa's text in his writings, then he would uh, source source out the original. Uh, he would search for the original source of such sayings, whether they appear in the uh, sutras or the tantras, or even within the writings of the great panditas in in India. If these, uh, if the sayings w or uh, the sayings were not validated uh, with such uh, original sources, uh, such as the scriptures uh, or the tantras or the uh, writings, classical writings of the uh, Indian Panditas, then Lama Tsongkhapa would not include them or, or cite them uh, within his writing. So therefore, um, here uh, Lama Tsongkhapa further goes to say, uh, in general, he has presented six, he has presented six general precepts in accordance with uh, how they appear in Natisha's commentary. So here, um, the precepts, the six general precepts Lama Tsongkhapa has quoted them uh, with their source uh, as the, from the commentary. Lama Tisha's commentary on the difficult points of the uh, the commentary for the land of the path enlightenment. And within that, Lama uh, Tsongkhapa says the first three of the special precepts explain the sutras. So the first three of the special precepts are uh, relying, having taken refuge in the Buddha, relying on virtuous uh, friends and a uh, spiritual master, and having gone for refuge to Dharma Jewel uh, to abandon harm and injury to sentient beings, and having taken a refuge in the Sangha Jewel to uh, disassociate with uh, beings who do not 
uh, uh, to not associate with beings who uh, do not uh, acknowledge the existence of karma and so forth, possessing such wrong views. So these three uh, general precepts have, uh, are explained in the sutras. Yes. Mm. Uh, Jamro <coughs> <coughs> ただ、つづけばいいんじゃ。いいな、ちいんじゃ。え、Yes. And then here the other three the the latter three precepts and the um special pre later three in the special precepts are quoted from uh, Vimalamitra's writing, the great master Vimalamitra's writing, Six Aspects of Going for Refuge. So the three other three precepts are um, whether uh, with regards to Buddha images, irregardless of their quality or their uh, the skill employed in crafting, in uh, fashioning the, the image of the Buddha, one should not criticize a whole, whole critical attitude towards uh, uh, the image, rather one should uh, respect it and see it as the actual Buddha or the actual founder himself. And also the with regards to the ta taking refuge in the Dharma, uh, even a single verse or a line that one comes across, uh, one should respect that, even as uh, one should respect as the actual Dharma jewel uh, and, and uh, respect that way. And then with reg res regards to taking refuge in the Sangha jewel, one should not uh, walk over uh, their the robes and so forth, respect even uh, the pieces of robes as the by remembering uh, the Sangha jewel. So here it says, uh, even ordinary monks, monks and so forth, monks and uh, ordinary Sangha and so forth, to think of them as actual Sangha jewel. So here, um, here Lama Tsongkhapa quotes from, from Vimala Mitra's writing, says here, an image, verse, or discarded scrap of yellow cloth, our faith and belief considered it to be the teacher. Do not mistakenly deny anything he has said. So here, uh, even a single, uh, so one should regard all of these uh, with faith uh, and res respect. So it says here, even a single verse or a line that one comes across, whether it's discarded uh, scrap of uh, writing, uh, Dharma writing, then one should, even if it's just a single letter, you know, one should uh, put you know, on one's crown in respect. And it says here, to view impure and impure uh, pure view pure and impure persons as though they were noble, as though they're noble beings. So here, in regar regards to uh, the ordained people, whether they have pure morality or have or their morality is impure, if they have uh, faulty faulty ethics, um, then still, uh, from one side, one should not focus on their faults. Rather, one should uh, see them as uh, <coughs> uh, noble beings, excellent beings, and then a uh, general respect. Yes. Uh, 
呃,就没有那个,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有,有
Инде да, кама бе сонне, когда мы гевишине, да, кама ба сонне, конге сонне, инде нам, не усо ба сон, теон ба ла, не нам ба гомба ба ла, тю сон хинес, им бардан не усо, не зор ба асене, когда мы гевишине, когда мы гевишине, не зор ба асене, а конге лаврен нона, два не сумбе пеньон де сон ме варе. In the Dark Amma Besone, and this song Goyan Rajiore, song Mendoz, song Tombana, Karesena, and then Nezoba Danganin Yambu, Gomba Vicum Dine, Shivicala, Gomba Vison Jones, song him. Da, Nitanande, Kamaba, Kong at Sambe Lavrim, Lumaba, you know, Katamogi Numaba said any by Jubin Arenola, that you call one. So uh, here it says that these precepts were drawn from the Compendium of Determinations as the text that was composed by Arya Sangha. And here it says that the, here the, the great Kadampa master, Gamaba, then mentioned that uh, Nusuba, which is another great Kadampa master, uh, in his Lamrim, you know, he did not teach these precepts uh, that were mentioned in the Compendium of Determinations. Um, however, he, both Gamaba and Usurba, both of them have received these, received these instructions from Gombawa, another great Kadamba master. And they, they are present, the, these uh, precepts of going for refuge appear in the presentation uh, of the Lamrim that is transmitted, transmitted in a different lineage, which comes from Gombawa, great master Gombawa, to another master, uh, Lumbawa. Yes. <coughs> え、だ。え、ジャムルラザテダドン、ガワ、ガワラ、ニャンバトトミジョンジュソネ。え、カチ、ソシラザトンボソンド。え、ジュンドチャブソンドワソギチノムトンワド。コンジョンチョバデチョ
So therefore, uh, the, it says here in the text, the Lama Tsongkhapa says that the former masters had suggested that if one uh, does not uh, observe the three special uh, special precepts, or the three special uh, precepts, sorry, the first three of the uh, special precepts, which is uh, relying, take, having taken refuge in the Buddha, not relying on other uh, worldly beings uh, as refuge, and then uh, and so forth, as well as the following three. Uh, constantly going for refuge, not forsaking refuge even for the sake of your life, making offering to three jewels. If one has uh, abandoned these, one has gone against these and these six, then one has lost uh, one's refuge in the sense that one, even though one has continues to have faith in the three jewels, one still needs to retake uh, the refuge vows. And and then there are also other masters which include the last three uh, special precepts of refuge which is uh, seeing the for uh, the body when uh, regard regarding the images of the Buddha as the actual uh, uh, actual Buddha himself, and then even with four words uh, of or a verse of the Dharma, you know, uh, sh showing respect to that regarding his actual Dharma jewel, and with regards to Sangha and so forth. Um, Regarding them as this, um, ordain, even ordinary, ordinary ordained people, regarding as the actual Sangha jewel. Reda, Tay so here, uh, Lama Tsong Papa says, you know, what, how the, what uh, constitutes an actual forsaking of refuge in the three jewels. And so as mentioned before, one should not abandon uh, refuge in the three jewels even at the, uh, at the expense of one's life. Um, so here it says, not just um, uh, merely saying, but uh, from abandoning the three jewels or forsaking the three jewels, refuge in the three jewels for the depth of one's being. And so uh, if, and that will constitute an actual uh, forsaking of refuge, losing one's refuge. Um, however, however, if one were to uh, go against the other uh, refuge precepts that will constitute only a um, a uh, offense. You know, there's there's a fault or a negativity, a fault with regards to the, uh, those precepts. One uh, one gains one commits a fault or offense, but however, that's not considered as an actual uh, losing of refuge or forsaking of refuge. And here, and then another uh, occasion is whereby one. Uh, even though one has not mentally abandoned the three jewels, one still continues to take refuge in the three jewels. But also at the same time, one were to take refuge in another uh, object of refuge other than three jewels, you know, in another founder, another teaching community. And hence one ends up having a double refuge. So in this case, one is not holding, as the, uh, tr holding or trusting the three jewels as uh, one's sole refuge. So if one were to 
uh, hold a double refuge uh, and not hold the three jewels as a sole refuge, then one loses one's refuge. And uh, with regards to the other precepts, likewise, uh, if one uh, goes against them, it's merely a an offense, uh, a, a an offense or a negativity, a fault of uh, going against the precepts. One does not lose refuge in the same way as mentioned above. Yes. <coughs> Uh Rani 
네, 동안 동안 네. 어, 다이아나 팽이 요리, 마도 탈비전의 로그 요리, 스마드 탈비전의 로그 요리에 대해 담재점이 전의 로그 요리, 제바드에게 담재점이 전의 로그 요리인데, 그래다 보게 내인네, 스마드 노게 제발 텔레점 로그 요리, 텔레점들 근주바도 텔레점이 누바 근주요비 연내 전에 엔닝 타반이 だ、ジャブソン。ネタもジャブソン。ネタもだ。え、チョロシーニョンビルケヤテ。え、だ。え、ジャブソン、ソネ、デイラブザ、マラバニナ、コンジョナ、え、ちょ、え、ノンタメレ
a lower a lower form of practice of refuge. And if one were to have fear towards the suffering of the entirety of cyclic existence, the entire samsara, and take refuge in the three jewels due to that, uh, with faith in the three jewels, and that would be the middling refuge. And if one were to uh, take refuge in the three jewels uh, in order to achieve Buddhahood for the sake of others, and believing the uh, faith in the three jewels, being able to help us achieve that, then this would be the supreme refuge. So, for example, if there were like four, four types of um, practitioners, four, four different people uh, simultaneously taking refuge. And for example, the first person, if a first person taking refuge would be uh, just merely mouthing the words of refuge with no, uh, uh, not possessing the two causes of refuge, not having fear nor faith, uh, then, uh, then this person would be, as we mentioned before, receiving only temporal benefit, not entire benefits of uh, refuge. And the, in comparison to the other three, three people taking refuge, you know, so these four people, even though they may be simultaneously reciting the lines of refuge, however, their, the merit that they receive from these recitations differ uh, due to the, different, the difference in their mental intentions. So the first person who recites refuge without uh, any mental thought process, you know, just merely reciting the words, uh, then that practice does not become actual dharma uh, because there's no actual intention. Then the, the second person um, takes refuge uh, due to fear lower realms and then receives the benefit, um, due to, you know, to receive the benefit of not being born in the lower realms, takes refuge in the three jewels. Then they, there's a um, person at a refuge of the lower capacity. And then the third person takes refuge uh, with, with the benefit of, uh, in, the intention of receiving the benefit of achieving liberation for oneself. Then that, uh, is a middling refuge, then the fourth person would take refuge with the intention of t obtaining an omniscient state of Buddhahood, that would be uh, the being of the gr refuge of the greater, greatest uh, capacity. So due to the difference in their thoughts and their intentions, um, then they take refuge and they re receive these different results from the uh, same practice of refuge. So, so therefore it is important to entrust ourselves entirely uh, from the depths of our being to uh, the three jewels, um, one, and also having taken such refuge, one should uh, steadfastly observe the precepts of refuge, uh, because if one does not observe the precepts of refuge, one is uh, the three jewels will not be able to protect us. So it's important to practice refuge, and also equally important to observe the precepts of refuge. Yes. Mm -hmm. but, uh, mm -hmm. ดาวินิมาลําเรมาพวงจินยุนดูเอ่อจอมมาตาบะซัมอันจอมมาตาบะซัมเนี่ยชื่อจีซึอืมนี่เงินรู้เจ้าเห็นนะเงินดูตรง
ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、
呃,那麼這個差的了。呃,在到本節的浪,在到,你浪的是個,天你不得,呃,將會的天,這差的。那天將會也把改善了,呃,天頭吧呢,呃,到,呃,搞不可能的空間的天幾個的的船船嘛。So here, uh, the text says the Buddha is the one who teaches refuge and the community assists you in accomplishing refuge, but the real refuge is the jewel of the teaching because once you have attained it, you are liberated from fear. So when one uh, says, I take refuge in the Dharma, in the teaching, then what one is taking refuge in is actually the noble truth of cessation and the noble truth of the path. So here, the noble truth of cessation is achieved through uh, meditating or uh, practicing the path through that, then one abandons either the uh, uh, obscurations of the afflictive emotions or the obscurations to knowledge. Either of these is abandoned in its entirety, uh, you know, henceforth abandoning its entirety without, uh, its abil without ability for the delusions or these obscurations to arise once more. So this, when one does that, so here one, one is not tem merely temporarily uh, and abandoning these uh, obscurations or afflictive emotions was abandoning them in, in their entirety so that it can, ne can never arise again. So for example, if one, when one has anger and as an antidote to that, one were to meditate on loving compassion, loving kindness and compassion, uh, these uh, states of mind are antidotes to anger only in, in an, on a on an, uh, temporal, temporal uh, level. Uh, one does not entirely, it merely stops the thought of anger for that moment, but it is not, and it, one does not entirely remove uh, the affliction of anger in, in its entirety. Uh, so, therefore, uh, when one achieves this uh, state of cessation, this noble truth of cessation, then one has totally abandoned all these, uh, abandoned these obscurations or defilements of forgive emotions without uh, so that they do no longer arise once more again in the future. So uh, this is done by uh, cultivating the path, uh, the noble truth of the path that uh, causes one to abandon these obscurations, and then through that one achieves this. Uh, act this one achieves this uh, noble truth of cessation. So therefore, these two are the actual refuges. You know, the actual dharma refuge, a dharma jewel. And, and which is one's actual refuge. So when one, one achieves that, then one is totally uh, liberated from fear. Yes. Uh, Golden so then the text says, with regard to this, the ultimate teaching jewel is defined as a special fulfillment of the gradual increase of two things. The, beginners, the beginning practitioner's elimination of a mere portion of faults and his or her knowledge that brings about a mere portion of good qualities. This is not something that appear, appears advent, adventitiously. So uh, with regards to the ultimate uh, object of attainment, the uh, noble truth of cessation and the noble truth of the path, uh, are these achieved in an adventitious way, in an adventitiously? And so here the answer is that it's not, you know, because for the beginner uh, who begins to cultivate the path, uh, even a mere slight, a small portion of abandonment of faults, um, as that abandonment gradually increases, uh, eventually it uh, 
fulfills into the attainment of the noble truth of cessation. And at the beginning of the path, as the, even if it give rise a mere portion of qualities, as that as those qualities increase in uh, size and increase in uh, amount in its force, then eventually it, it uh, ripens into fulfillment of the uh, attainment of the noble truth of the path. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jobby Chute, <laughs> So then uh, we move on to the, to the next page, 209. And here uh, in the text, Sulama Tsongkhapa explains the reason for this, uh, to practice like this is that, for example, uh, in the refuge uh, of the lower scope, now the being takes refuge in the three jewels uh, due to the fear of uh, rebirth in the lower realms after death. So here one uh, goes to refuge, the Buddha is the actual teacher of refuge, uh, as the teacher of refuge, goes to re refuge to the Dharma jewel, uh, as the actual refuge in itself, and goes to refuge to the Sangha jewel as the support of refuge, uh, practice of refuge. So here, um, how does the Dharma protect us uh, from from such the, the refuge, the Dharma that one goes for refuge to, Dharma jewel that one goes for refuge to? How does that protect us uh, from such suffering? So here it says, at this point, master the classifications of virtue and non-virtue as well as their effects. Um, you must then make it your practice to pro properly cast aside non-virtues and adopt virtues. So with regard, one needs to know the differences and the different types of classifications with regards to the, these two phenomena, the virtuous, phenomen uh, virtuous actions and non-virtuous actions. Uh, the virtuous actions result in, uh, uh, ripen as the results of happiness, uh, and the uh, non-virtuous actions ripen into results of suffering. So therefore, uh, one needs to master the classifications, the differences between these two and the different types of virtuous and non-virtuous actions. And then having done so, one uh, goes about actually abandoning uh, the acts of non-virtue, the non-virtuous actions, as well as uh, cultivating uh, the virtuous actions. Kind <laughs> Ngensong <laughs> Let 
So here, uh, the uh, proper uh, taking uh, with regards to karma, the proper adoption of uh, pra pr adoption of adoption and abandonment. Uh, these are the imp this is the way that the Dharma uh, protects us from suffering by adopting virtuous pra uh, practices of virtue, cultivating virtuous actions, and abandoning um, uh, non-virtuous actions. This is the how the Dharma jewel protects us from suffering at this point of time. Um, if w if one were to be fearful of rebirth uh, in the neg uh, the lower realms, one must understand that rebirth in the lower realms is caused by uh, is a ripening result of negative karma. It's caused by negative karma. Therefore, one needs to abandon. Uh, one needs to take up the ethics of abandoning the ten non virtuous actions in order to prevent uh, such rebirth. If one is, is able to observe properly the ethics of abandoning the ten non virtuous actions. One would definitely achieve rebirth uh, in in the uh, a happy migrator uh, realm, as in the higher realms. And if one is uh, unable to do that, unable to observe such ethics, then one will uh, be reborn in the lower realms, in the suffering realms. Uh, so therefore, um, uh, this is how the Dharma jewel protects us from fear of rebirth in the lower realms. If one is fearful. Of rebirth in the lower realms, and one should be, and one must be able to practice it, um, the ethics, moral ethics of abandoning and ten non-virtuous actions. Uh, it is not sufficient to be merely fearful uh, of the lower realms. One must be able to stop the causes for rebirth uh, in these lower realms, and the way to do that is to abandon the ten non-virtuous actions to cultivate such ethics. So it's like it's uh, you know, taking poison. A person who is po has taken poison and uh, and even just merely fearful of the the effects of poison, um, which is death, you know, is not sufficient. If one were be to be able to rely on the medicine that uh, can stop the reverse or uh, stop that poison, the effects of the poison, only then can one be liberated from the fear of the po effects of the poison. So therefore, it's not sufficient to merely fear uh, rebirth in lower realms. One must be able to stop the cause of the uh, rebirth in the lower realms uh, appearing or ripening. So the way to do that is to abandon the ten non-virtuous actions, you know, take up the ethics of abandoning the ten non-virtuous actions. In this way one can liberate, only through this way can one liberate oneself from fear of rebirth in the lower realms. Uh, so therefore this is the main practice uh, in this point of time, the, uh, abandon the ethics of abandoning the ten non-virtuous actions. Yes. Uh, Chibichunga, ตันติบิกิจุกุนจอชายาเกตันติเอเอเลดาจอมปอมเมปอมมาเทดาญอนเดญิมโมเตเตโตจิสุตมาจากยอเรเอตะเอไทจุกุนจอตจิสุนทุ
So when uh, one, so this way, uh, protecting from rebirth uh, in the lower realms is the uh, <coughs> is the aim of the beings of the lower capacity when take refuge in the three jewels to protect oneself from rebirth in the lower realms, and the main practice of that is to abandon the uh, ten non-virtuous actions. And however, this is not uh, the actual uh, dharma jewel as mentioned before. The actual dharma jewel is uh, possessed only by the uh, excellent beings, the Arya or the noble beings. And they, but however, this, the, the practice uh, of the Dharma or refuge in the Dharma in the lower being, uh, in the capacity, lower capacity, at the level of the lower capacity being, uh, that is conforming to the Dharma jewel. You know, it is similar to Dharma jewel, conforming to Dharma jewel. Because as mentioned before, the, the ultimate Dharma jewel is a, uh, a state of uh, abandonment and attainment that is that has that has its sources or its roots in the beginnings, humble beginnings of the uh, practitioner initially uh, making small efforts to abandon sm uh, small portions of faults and cultivating or giving rise to small portions of qualities, ultimately ripening into the fulfillment of the actual Dharma jewel. So therefore, therefore, at, in the beginner's level, uh, that kind of refuge uh, to 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 be able to uh, free oneself from uh, fear of rebirth in the lower realms, and go for going where future dharma jewel, and in order to do that, you know, abandoning non-virtuous actions, cultivating virtuous actions, and this w un through understanding the different classifications of non-virtue and non-virtue. So in this way, this this uh, practice, you know, the, in this beginner's practice, ultimately conforms to the ultimate uh, dharma jewel that one will attain in the future. So therefore, uh, the the actual Dharma jewel that um, causes one to abandon the entirety of cyclic existence or samsara, that is through contemplating uh, the noble truth of suffering, uh, and then meditating onto the noble noble truth of the path, you know, then eventually attaining the uh, uh, noble truth of cessation and so forth. And then this, therefore, that would be a Dharma jewel or or a kind of refuge conforming to uh, a being of practitioner of the uh, middling scope. And for practitioners of the greater scope, their refuge uh, also combines uh, not only the above mentioned, but also combines the practice of compassion as a skill, as the method, um, method of the path, uh, method of the path, a practice in mind of great compassion, and also uh, as for the wisdom aspect of the path, they cultivate the wisdom of uh, emptiness, uh, the wisdom of understanding emptiness. So. And then they go for refuge to the three jewels in order to pr protect themselves uh, from the mind that wishes to accomplish merely one's own benefit. And so, therefore, as in the practice of refuge in the highest scope, um, they, there is a, also a practice of the uh, the union, uh, the union, or the, the union of the method and wisdom uh, together. Yes. Mm. Sabadushivani <laughs> Rongkowan so uh, with regards to refuge that is being practiced, the kind of refuge that is being practiced within the scope of the highest being, here one takes refuge in the three jewels in order to protect oneself uh, from the fear of uh, cyclic existence, samsara, as well as the fear of the peace of nirvana of low or lower uh, nirvana here. 
So here, um, for example, if one were to achieve the kind of nirvana that is uh, a cessation that is achieved by the hearers, the arhats, and the uh, solitary realizers, the Pratyeka Buddhas, then that kind of when one that kind of nirvana is achieved for one's own purpose, and one practices the path for one's own benefit. And if one were to achieve that kind of cessation, then one would be lost uh, within that, uh, those states of meditative absorptions are for long periods of time, uh, long periods of time. And then um, here Mishra used the word like distracted you know, towards that kind of uh, concentration, that kind of absorption uh, for long periods of time without being able, distracted from the purpose of benefiting uh, other sentient beings. And so therefore one would not be able to benefit sentient beings for a long period of time. So uh, the, the, the practitioner of the highest scope takes refuge uh, from this kind of fear of this kind of uh, absorptions. So also uh, this kind of um, distraction from uh, achieving the purpose of other sentient beings. And also if one is not free, has not freed oneself from the suffering of cyclic existence, one would not be able to uh, free or liberate others from fear of cyclic existence from as well. So therefore, uh, with the fear of cyclic existence, then going for refuge uh, to the three jewels. So and then at this point in time, through practicing a union of method and wisdom, meditating on compassion, um, in order to uh, abandon, uh, in order to abandon the mind seeking to benefit oneself, one becomes a fitting refuge in uh, <coughs> or object to able to pr protect other sentient beings or liberate other sentient beings from suffer suffering a cyclic existence. And also one meditates upon the uh, wisdom of emptiness, which is the antidote to the uh, cyclic existence, antidote to the root of cyclic existence, the um, ignorant mind clinging inherently existing self. So in this way, one uh, also uproots the causes of cyclic existence. One becomes a fitting refuge. Uh, one is able to protect sentient beings. And so therefore, this kind of refuge is being practiced, is the actual <coughs> dharma jewel or practice within the uh, highest scope, or practitioner of the highest scope. So here, <coughs> the uh, the Dharma, uh, Dharma of the great capable being, uh, is the the Dharma is uh, practicing cooperatively uh, the method of wisdom. So <coughs> both uh, 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 because in the highest tantra, because in the tang, uh, tantra, of course, it's different meaning. You know, the uni unification. So one mind is a practicing with the wisdom. So here, you know, uh, <coughs> uh, explain that here, the mm, uh, the here what you know, is saying, the uh, dharma of the great capable being. Um, so the, the dharma that is uh, dharma that is practice uh, practice the method wisdom corporately. But uh, how? The, by by two two separate mind. Uh, practicing uh, two separate minds. So the mind uh, practicing method, the mind practicing wisdom, separate mind. Then, so, but, but practicing corporately. So that's the ma that's the dharma of the great capable being. So the um, making one one point that Rishi mentioned just a while ago was that the, the compassion uh, stops or see, uh, stops or seizes the extremities of uh, personal nirvana, personal liberation, and the test. The, Practice compassion ceases or stops the extremities of personal liberation, and the uh, method, the wisdom, practice of wisdom stops or ceases the extremities of our cyclic existence. Yes. Veda, jam lo je yun du gong na tan da, song je la jam dong ma bu mu ne jam sun duo ya de, chui la jam mu, da ngon du jia ba mu bu gong ne jam sun duo ya, jin du jiao zhu du bei zhuo. 
ကိုယ်ရောတော့ဒီနေ့တော့ချင်းလာအဲကြောင်းမှုတာငွန်းတို့ချပါဆိုတော့ညီတွေငွန်းတို့ချရာတော့ညီတွေထုတ်ချက်
Also, there is a, the last part of what she said was that if you, um, as a beginner's practice, one abandons um, faults to, to the best of one's ability and nurtures qualities to the best of one's ability, this should be seen as the, an act of actual refuge to the Dharma Jewel. So this is the actual practice of refuge to 